It's great to see all of you here. Um, this is a very important day. Many of you who work in this area, who care a lot about this area, have a chance to actually get together and start thinking about what additional things we need to do to address this problem. But let me just give some introductory remarks. Uh, first of all, you know our nation is facing an epidemic of clinician burnout. Uh, the past several years, the medical community has recognized this alarming crisis of physician and clinician burnout and suicide. But the public, I think, remains largely unaware of this. So the burnout affects uh, those in training as well as in practice. Over 50% of physicians and 45 to 60% of medical students and residents have symptoms of burnout. Furthermore, physician rates of depression or suicide ideation remain alarmingly high, around so 40%. This issue, as you all know, is not unique to physicians. Uh, that there are high prevalence rates of symptoms of post-traumatic stress disorder and emotional dis exhaustion among nurses and other health profession. Mm -hmm. And as you know, this trend is alarming in itself, but even more when we consider impact on patients and society. So I think there is certainly agreement in this room, and of course now in our community, there's an urgency to act to reverse these trends. The National Academy of Medicine, at the urging of leadership in health and education, and I'll single out Daryl Kirsch and uh, Tom Nasker, uh, we jumped into action and have pursued two lines of activities which are convergent. First, launching the Action Collaborative three years ago by bringing together many of you, stakeholders, including clinicians, policy makers, insurers, educators, health system leaders, uh, information technology experts, and patients to work collectively to address this crisis. And secondly, conducting a consensus study on taking action against clinician burnout, a systems approach to professional well-being, which was released six weeks ago. The purpose of these two synergistic activities are to increase the visibility of burnout by shining a light on the crisis and understanding the basis of the burnout and recommending solutions to prevent it. So indeed, it has been our plan that upon the release of the report, uh, we will use the Action Collaborative to disseminate the findings of the report and develop a coordinated effort of stakeholders to implement the recommendations of the report. The report, and I want to shout out for uh, Chris Castle and uh, Dr. Karinian is a bold vision of redesigning clinical systems. One should focus on activities that patients find important to their care and which enables uh, and empowers clinicians to provide high quality care. A report is only impactful if it generates action, actions that will transform the systems addressing the underlying problem. This is the reason why we convene all of you here today. Over the last 50 years, the National Academy's consensus report through the IOM, for example, influenced the trajectory of health by instigating policy changes in government or organizations, providing evidence on which to base actions and reframing how the world thinks about health problems and solutions. And nearly 20 years ago, the IOM launched the modern patient safety movement with the publication of two landmark reports, first to as human, and secondly, crossing the quality chasm. There are subsequently a dozen such reports on this topic, and these reports have driven transformational change in healthcare delivery. Certainly we hope today that our report, your report, will have a similar impact for the field, call your attention to the issue of uh, patients say of clinician burnout and of course quality of patient care. Our report, your report must be translated into action. Now that we have a report, you notice that the goal areas in the report map converges nicely into the working groups of the action collaborative. 
The action collaborator will be, will be the primary vehicle to move forward the recommendation into action. So throughout the meeting today, we'll dig into the report and begin translating roadmap provided by committee into action. So thank you all for being here. I'm very, very excited for today because truly now we have a wonderful report and hopefully it'll have the same impact as today as human. And we have an action collaborative that's poised to already been working, but poised to act on some of the implementation of recommendations. So thank you very much. And I look forward to turning it over the meeting to Charlie. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Um, I echo Victor's sentiment. I'm very excited to be here today. Um, so I'm Charlie Alexander, a senior program officer at the National Academy of Medicine, and I direct the Action Collaborative on Clinician Wellbeing and Resilience. Um, and it's my pleasure to welcome you to the sixth meeting of the Action Collaborative, which is really to highlight the consensus report taking action against clinician burnout. So I'll provide a brief overview of the Action Collaborative and today's agenda, and then We'll get started. So the Action Collaborative launched in January 2017 with three key goals. The first is to raise visibility of clinician burnout, depression, moral injury, and suicide. Um, so to really make clinician well-being a national priority. The second goal is to improve baseline understanding of the challenges to clinician well-being, so not just to look where the light is, but to fundamentally understand uh, what the drivers are of some of these conditions that clinicians face and what the consequences are for clinicians, for patients, and for the overall healthcare system. Um, and our third goal is to advance evidence-based, multidisciplinary solutions that will improve patient care by caring for the caregiver. A group of dedicated sponsors supports the Action Collaborative. Uh, for the sake of time, I won't go through them all, um, but they are available in your briefing materials, and we are grateful for the generous support to do this important work. For the first two and a quarter years of the Action Collaborative, the working groups were focused on laying the groundwork for our efforts. And we had four groups focused on research, data, and metrics. Our second group was focused on designing a conceptual model of the factors affecting clinician well-being and resilience. The third group looked at external factors and workflow. And the fourth was focused on messaging and communications. But to really close the gap from where we are to where we want to be, we modified our approach to move to action, engagement, and implementation. Um, and so now we have six working groups that are listed here. The first is leadership engagement, and the aim is to engage leadership to transform organizations to improve well-being. Um, we have been very successful in the first um, two and a quarter years of engaging frontline clinicians, and now we really want to make sure that we have um, connections with leaders to make these sustainable changes at the um, systems and organizational level. The second group is focused, focused on organizational best practices and metrics, and this group aims to establish organizational guiding principles, promising practices, and metrics to improve clinician well-being. The third group is focused on breaking the culture of silence. They're out of order. Um, and this, <laughs> this group aims to advance new norms, practices, and policies that reduce barriers and stigma for mental health-seeking behaviors. Um, the fourth group on workload and workflow is focused on administrative tasks and the electronic health record. And this group endeavors to advance new models of workflow documentation, um, workflow and documentation that support clinician well-being by minimizing administrative burden and streamlining patient care. We have one group that's focused on exploring potential next steps for the collaborative. Um, our funding currently runs through December 2020, um, and this group uh, will be making recommendations to the steering committee um, tomorrow about how we should continue this work. And then finally, as Victor noted, we had a highly anticipated report released on October 23rd um, focused on systems approaches to improving clinician well-being. 
Um, and so we have another group that is specifically devoted to advancing the recommendations, internally coordinating with the other working groups, coordinating with outside stakeholders, um, and that group will launch um, over the next couple of days. The working groups are comprised of about 65 to 70 participants across medicine, nursing, pharmacy, dentistry. Um, we've got professional organizations and membership societies, government agencies, health IT vendors, large healthcare centers, payers, researchers, trainees, and early career professionals, and patient and consumer perspectives. Um, so it's a big tent type project. Um, there are a lot of folks um, and organizations that participate in this effort. Um, and it's important for us to have this robust group of stakeholders at the table um, so that we can develop solutions together, so that no one is left out, so that we can really focus on the system, reduce <coughs> silos, um, and advance clinician well-being. Our meeting objectives for today are to present the findings, conclusions, and recommendations from the consensus report, to discuss the conceptual framework and foundational principles underlying the report goals, findings, and recommendations, um, to gain an understanding of how the report goals and recommendations apply to the different stakeholder groups in the room today and those in the broader healthcare system, and to learn about specific actions across the system to reduce burnout and foster professional well being. Um, we also want to have good insight from the brain trust in the room about what the action collaborative can do to advance the consensus recommendations. And finally, we want, um, we want those with us today to make commitments to carry forward the report recommendations. Here is our agenda at a glance. Um, you also have the agenda in your briefing materials. Um, we will have a keynote address. Uh, we will provide an overview of the report. We'll have an opportunity for folks in the room and online to provide questions for the committee. Uh, we'll hear some sponsor reflections. Uh, we'll get some insight from a patient um, advocate about the role of patients in improving clinician well-being. Um, Importantly, we're going to have a number of breakout groups. There are six options that mirror the goal areas presented in the consensus report. And these are an opportunity for us to really dig into the recommendations, to take this nice roadmap that Victor mentioned, and to begin um, moving to action. After the breakouts, we'll have a full group discussion, um, some reflections and commitments, and then we'll have some closing remarks. So it'll be a fun day. Um, throughout the program, uh, please feel free to raise your hand, ask any questions. For those on the webcast, um, please submit questions via the chat box. Later this morning, we will launch Poll Everywhere, our real-time audience engagement tool, so we'll be able to get some more insights from folks in the room. Um, it's just not quite ready for us this morning. Um, okay, and finally, I would like to acknowledge my colleagues at the National Academies who have dedicated themselves to supporting the Action Collaborative and the Consensus Report and designing and executing the meeting. Um, I'm very proud of this team and I'm grateful every day for the opportunity to get to work with them. Um, and the team is so good, we won an award at the National Academy of Medicine annual meeting for our teamwork. Um, <laughs> So I will read the names of our folks, ask them to stand, and then we can have a collective round of applause. So Mars and Dell, Mich Micheline Torre, Sammy Phillips, Candace Webb, Laura Ayupa, Mark Meisner, Cheryl Nass, Laura DiStefano, not here yet, Samira Abbas, and then we also have a former colleague with us, Kira Capolucci. So let's give them all a round of applause. <laughs>